Assalamu alaikum. I'm Imam Dai Abdullah, the director of LGBT Outreach Program at Muslims for Progressive Values. In this video, we are going to talk about our understanding of how relationship laws were formed in the Muslim community in conjunction with the scholars' backgrounds in different faiths, as well as cultural backgrounds. Jurisprudence of any subject takes time to formulate itself in any culture. When it comes to sensitive subjects such as sexual relationships, these scholars had to make sure that their understanding of religion was compatible with the cultures they lived in. Of course, this presented different challenges to different scholars in different periods. As we can see, there are three types of religiously sanctioned sexual relationships in the Muslim community, and they all have their connections to the previous cultures of such Muslims in any period. Traditional marriage is a sacred institution in Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. It is an institution that has definitely influenced religious, cultural, and political understanding of homosexuality. In the Jewish tradition, as we have discussed before, there was a need to continue the growth of the community through marriage, and therefore homosexuality was seen as something detrimental towards that goal. Of course, homosexuality was not the only thing that could get in the way of that goal. There were also several other things, including food items, which were excluded from culture. This was all done to make sure that the Jewish culture remained unique in a non-monotheistic environment. In the Muslim tradition, marriage is also sacred. For example, some Muslim scholars have argued that marriage is half of your faith. Therefore, a young man or a young woman would need to get married to complete their faith. Now, when we look at homosexuality with that understanding in mind, we can see why there is a growing hostility towards homosexual acts and homosexual lifestyles as time goes on throughout Islamic history. For example, we can see in the early Muslim period how Jewish cultural influences sexual relationships. However, later on, when Persian influences become greater, we see how pre-Islamic Persian culture makes its way into Islam. In Christianity, it is a little bit different because it has to do with the fact that Christianity itself is a marriage between the East and the West. As we discussed before, when the Roman Emperor chose Christianity, it put him in a place of having to unite the cultures and the religious backgrounds of two completely different people. Of course, these cultures both had their own understanding of sexual relationships outside of the opposite sex. As time goes on, throughout the history of Christianity, we also see how marriage is changing. For example, in Europe, during the division between Catholicism and Protestantism, we see how marriage in the Protestant church moves from faith to secular law. In both Judaism and Islam, because both of these faiths were part of a military expansion in their respective communities, there were a lot of women who either lost their husbands or didn't have much chance of meeting a husband due to the high casualties of war. Therefore, we see both in Judaism and Islam that there is room for a different kind of relationship, one between a man and several women, whether these women had been free, captives of war, or slaves. When we look at this type of relationship, we can see that it is still part of the contribution towards growing those communities of faith. So, that means homosexuality was still something in opposition to the imagined positions of the community. In Islam, there are a lot of Quranic verses, as well as many Hadith entries and scholarly works, which discuss the legality of concubinage. For example, the phrase, except what your right hand possesses, has followed many verses that place limitations on sexual activities outside of legal relationships. Now, interestingly enough, in Islam, the verb used to describe these legal relationships is a universal word that can apply towards relationships of both same sexes and opposite sexes. That word is temporary. 
Now that we have discussed traditional marriage, as well as concubinage, we can look at a third phenomenon in the Muslim community, especially in the Shia branch. According to Shia leaders, temporary marriages are necessary for many of life's unplanned incidences. For example, if a Shia man were traveling in a new town and fell ill, or had to stay longer than he had planned for business reasons, he could, in fact, get into a contractual agreement with a free woman and leave after the term was over, allowing him to go back to his wife and children. The main differences between traditional and temporary marriages is that temporary marriages have a beginning and an end. Whereas, traditional marriages are assumed and entered into with a lifetime commitment in mind. Interestingly enough, there are instances in the Bible, both Jewish and Christian, where temporary marriages seem to have taken place. For example, in the book of Kings, Solomon had contracted marriage with 700 women and had 300 concubines. According to one source, there were two prominent rabbis in Babylonia around 300 years before Islam, when the Persian culture practiced temporary marriages under Zoroastrian religion. These rabbis practiced temporary marriages themselves without any problems from their Jewish community. This means they found their own legal reasoning for being able to perform and participate in such marriages. Now, if we look at how this type of marriage applies to homosexual persons, we see that there aren't any logical or legal reasons why they shouldn't. Of course, neither Shia nor Jewish scholars seemed to imagine this phenomenon being useful or even applicable to homosexual relationships. Perhaps one can look at that with an understanding to the heteronormative cultures of these communities. In conclusion, we need to acknowledge that Muslim understanding as well as regulations of sexual relationships, had always to do with the previous cultures. Whether it was Jewish converts to Islam, who brought their own understanding of such subjects in early Islamic communities, or Persian Muslims rebranding their pre-Islamic marriage institutions. Muslims created the legalities around sexual relationships that have changed throughout the periods of Arab, Persian, and Ottoman leadership. <laughs>